कुंज बिहारी कोपी जन बलबा किरी बरधारी गोपी जन बलबागिरी बरधारी कसुरनंदना बजजन रंजना जसुरनंदना बजजन रंजना चमुन तिराव नचारी Tirava na jari, Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Kopi Jana Balaba Kiri Baradhari Jasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Samuna Tira Bona Chari Shamuna Tira Vana Chari Chaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Chaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Jana Balaba Kiri Baradhari Jasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Bona Chari Jamuna Tira Bona Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Gopi Jana Bala Bhagiri Bharahari Jasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Jasoda Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada, Jaya Prabhu Pada. Jaya Prabhu Bada, Jaya Prabhu Bada, Jaya Prabhu Bada, Jaya Prabhu Bada. Jaya Vishnu Pada Paramansa, Pari Brajika Charja Stokta Sata Shat, Shishi Mata Devanga, AC Bhakti Vedanta Goswami, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jaya Vishnu Pada Paramhansa Pada Prajika Charja Stotara Sata Shishi Mantas Devange Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Iskand Founder at Charja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Prem Sekha Ho Shri Krishna Chaitana Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adoita Gadadar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Sri Radha Krishna Go Gopinatha Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhana Ki Jai Nabandabhati Dham Ti Ki Jai Nabhati Dham Ki Jai Mayapur Dham Ki Jai Sri Sri Nabhati Dham Ki Jai Ganga Maya Ki Jai Gaur Premanandi Hari Bol Shama Veda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees <coughs> All glories to Sri Sri Guru and Sri Goranga Narayanam Namaskaricham Naram Charam Chaivam Narotaram Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirayat Nasta Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki <coughs> Reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, 12th Chapter, 19th Verse, is that correct? 19th Verse? Okay. Tapasaiva Param Jyotir Bhagavan Tamarokshajam Sarvabhuta Guhavasam Anjasa Vindate Bhuman Tapasaiva Param Jyotir Bhagavan Tamarokshajam Sarvabhuta Guhavasam 
and to serve in the table man. Tava Saiva Param Jyoti Bhagavan Tamar Hoksajam Sarva Bhuta Guhavasam Andrasavindatepaman Tapasa by penance, Eva only, Param the Supreme, Jyotihi light, Bhagavantam unto the personality of Godhead, Adhokshajam he who is beyond the approach of the senses, Sarvabhuta Guhavasam. residing in the heart of all living entities. Andrasa, completely. Vindate, can know. Puman, a person. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. By penance only, one can even approach the personality of Godhead, who is within the heart of every living entity, and at the same time beyond the reach of all senses responsibly. By penance only, one can even approach the personality of Godhead, who is within the heart of every living entity, and at the same time beyond the reach of all senses. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Rudra was advised by Brahma to perform penance as an example to his sons and followers that penance is necessary for attaining the favor of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In Bhagavad Gita, it is said that the common mass of people follow the path shown by an authority. Thus, Brahma discussed it with the Rudra generations and afraid of being devoured by the increase of population, asked Rudra to stop producing such unwanted generation and to take the penance for attaining the favor of the Supreme Lord. We find, therefore, in pictures that Rudra is always sitting in meditation for the attainment of the favor of the Lord. Indirectly, the sons and followers of Rudra are advised to stop the business of annihilation. Following the Rudra principle while the peaceful creation of Brahma is going on. The verse again, by penance only, one can approach this, the personality of Godhead, who is within the heart of every living entity, and at the same time beyond the reach of all senses. Agena Purandasya Gananan Shampatambati. Real penance 
is, is, is what we're all engaged in. And, and now, following the four regulative principles, no meat eating, no gambling, no, no illicit sex, and no uh, intoxication, if that is a form of penance. People are often surprised that we're very happy and very full of music and, and have good food. And at the same time, we're, we're involved in penance. We don't uh, have intoxication. We don't believe in illicit sex or uh, meat eating or gambling. So it is, very, uh, it is by penance that, that uh, we're actually here. And these instructions to, to, even Brahma had to undergo a lot of penance to create the material world. It is often said that poverty is the wealth of the Brahmins. So penance sometimes involves austerity. And it is said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Yashiham, uh, Yashiham, uh, one, one uh, can uh, be favored by Krishna only if Krishna takes everything away from him. Yashiham Anugrahami, everything is taken away. Uh, Shruti Kirti once told that uh, Prabhupada, that he was going to leave his service. He was doing massage and he was doing some personal service for him. And uh, Srila Prabhupada asked him why why are you leaving? And he said, well, I, I just want to, to sing and dance like those people. So they were, they were, there was a, a kirtan going on with a lot of singing and dancing. And uh, Prabhupada said, yes, they are singing and dancing, but you are doing something. So he was indicating that, that he was very disturbed by the fact that uh, Shudakirti was planning on leaving. Uh, it is very difficult to understand some things about Lord Brahma, even though Lord Brahma is the, the uh, center of the universe, the supreme Godhead, uh, the creator God. But there's an incident even where he was uh, lusting after his own daughter in, his own daughter in another kalpa. And uh, this was questioned by one of the devotees. How could, if he's the head of our sampradaya and such an elevated person, how could he have lust in his heart for his own daughter? Uh, of course, later on, uh, uh, Lord Rama uh, renounced that position and uh, gave up that material body. But it was a, it was a very mysterious thing how even the, even a great demigod like Lord Rama can can uh, have have uh, 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 fall downs, temporary fall downs at least. So penance is is is, is very important, and it is it is because of penance that uh, in in the beginning of Krishna consciousness many. Uh, parents were were dis were uh, unhappy with their children taking to Krishna consciousness because they had given up drinking wine and and uh, beer and uh, they had just given up everything for the sake of chanting so that they thought they were very strange. So there was one uh, one girl uh, we'll, we'll call her uh, Miss K or uh, I don't remember all the details exactly but I'll do my very best who uh, joined the movement when she was 19 years old. And uh, uh, that was in about 1970, uh, or, or, uh, yeah, 69, 70. And uh, I had just returned from England and, and sat down into my office and I got a telephone call from the head of the community in, in uh, Los Angeles saying that Kula, uh, that uh, th this, uh, I, I so, sort of said part of her name, <laughs> Mrs. K has been kidnapped. And uh, it was a very strange thing. I said, how is that possible? And, and uh, he uh, uh, said that she was kidnapped by her own parents. So to go uh, to the, the, the back story to this is that uh, Miss K had phoned me and said that uh, my parents want to see me. They lived in, in Pasadena, California. It's kind of a suburb of, of Los Angeles. You may have heard of it, the Pasadena Road Parade. It's, a, it's known as a very conservative area, but it's not far from Los Angeles. So. Uh, so he said, well, we should go there right away. So I, I, he came to, pick, to collect me in his car. It was not very far away. And uh, it was a, a, an orange colored Datsun of that year or a year before. And we drove out to, to the house. And the, there was uh, no sign of life in the house. And what had happened was that uh, this Miss K had gone to the house on the pretext that her mother's uh, mother, her grandmother, was very sick and they had to go and, and she had to go and see her before she uh, possibly uh, expired or something if she was very ill. So uh, I, I, when, when she asked me if, uh, if, I, if uh, it would be a good thing to go, she was kind of doubtful because she said that 
every, that she had invited her parents to come and visit her several times, but they had never come. They were strict. I don't know if they were strict, but they were uh, very committed Roman Catholics. And, uh, but I, I, I mentioned to her that, that uh, if, if you stay with your fiance all the t at every moment, uh, I think it's, you would be, it'd be safe. So she went to the door with her uh, fiance, and uh, the mother came to the door and, and, and looked at the fiance and said, I just want to talk with my daughter for a few moments alone. I won't be for more than a few moments. Do you mind? And he very grudgingly uh, didn't follow my advice, but went back to his car, which was out front of the house, and, uh, and, and watched and saw, and, and then she went into the house. And, and the first thing she said is, where's Granny? And the mother, who had been uh, crying, uh, or apparently crying, uh, <coughs> manifesting alligator tears, said that, well, she's still in hospital. We'll have to go and see her there. She's in the intensive care unit. And then Mrs. K kind of knew that something was uh, uh, suspicious, something was wrong. So she started to leave and go out the door and, and to join her fiance. And her fiance saw that as she was stepping out of the front door, Several hands grabbed her and pulled her back in. Um, she, he didn't, didn't know what exactly was happening, so she, she didn't have much choice, but uh, they, 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 that we found out later what, what was happening was that they, they spirited her out the, the back door. There was a back door to that house and uh, sat her down and sat on, and her, her, uh, her brother-in-law, her sister's brother, <laughs> was, who was, uh, sat on her to make sure that she, she wouldn't escape, and they drove off. And uh, just before this happened, the, the brother-in-law had come out to the car of, 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 of Miss Kay's fiance and, and tried to disable the car by pulling out the distributor caps, but he was unsuccessful, and he went back in the house to, to join the, the party. The party was engaged in, at that time in, in um, in holding her down and, and, and spiriting, out, spiriting her out the back door to the car. So uh, he, uh, he, he, he went and knocked on the door and there was no answer. So uh, it was, this, um, uh, and there, these were the days, and it was at about in 1969 or 1970, 1971, there was no, um, I don't remember the exact uh, year, but there was, uh, there was no, um, uh, cell phones in those days. So he, he uh, the fiance looked for the, uh, everything was dark and, and in the house. It was getting to be late at night. It was a Saturday night and it was, it was becoming dusk and it was becoming dark. And uh, so he looked for a telephone. And the first telephone booth he found was, was, was where he made his phone call. And fortunately he had a couple of, of coins and put in the, in, the, in the phone. And then he phoned the temple to say what had happened. So the, 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 the uh, head of the temple and I drove out there in the same car uh, trying to, to find out what had happened. And then he mentioned that what, what had happened, that he had driven off and, and uh, the head of the temple said that we should stay there and, 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 and as vigilantes guard the house. So, <laughs> so then uh, he, he uh, phoned another person who was at the temple so there would be a constant and who would come out in his car, so there would be a constant vigilante in front of the temple, in front of the house, to see that uh, what was going on. But it, the house remained dark and, un, and unanswerable, and, and there were no lights on, and it had gotten quite dark outside. So the head of the temple and I were, were, had the first shift of the, of the vigilante thing. We didn't stay there very long, about uh, 20 minutes, and then, and then we, we um, Drove to the to the uh, uh, the uh, the the uh, suburb is of Pasadena that we were in was called Arcadia, Washington, Arcadia, Arcadia, um, California. So we went to the local police station, and t and uh, th and told the desk sergeant that we wanted to report a kidnapping. <laughs> and so when we told him what had happened, and he said, "Well, how could a person be kidnapped by by their own parents?" And he said, if that happened to my uh, daughter or son, I would have done the same thing. I would have uh, uh, taken, taken her out, out of, out of uh, you know, misery. So we didn't know exactly what happened. So we said, well, what, uh, but, but she was kidnapped. She was uh, taken against her will. And he said, 
he said, well, I can't accept this. If you, if you put it in writing, maybe I can think about it. So then we were looking for a phone to call our lawyer to ask what to do. And when we finally, uh, it was getting to be late at night, so we had to call him at home because it was dark and he was finished with working. So he reluctantly told us that we had a right to, uh, to file a complaint, but it, have to, it would have to be done uh, in writing. And it would have to be done in triplicate, in th three copies. So we didn't have any paper, we didn't have any pencils, and we didn't know what to do. So we looked around. It was getting to be Saturday night, so we drove around this little suburb, and then we drove into Pasadena, and finally found a, a department, a big uh, store like Kohl's or Woolworths or something like that. I forget the name of it. And uh, we went inside, and fortunately, they had a, uh, a stationary department. And in the stationary department, we managed to, to find enough paper to write this complaint out and triplicate and enough pencils and pencil sharpener to write it out. So we drove back to the house, uh, armed with, the, with our paper and pencils and carbon paper, and started to write a very detailed complaint. It ended up being about three pages long to explain everything that happened. And then, uh, 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 then we went back to the police station and, and uh, gave it to the, to the uh, desk sergeant, and he reluctantly accepted. He said, well, he said, except, he said, I can't do anything, but I have to accept. And the, the lawyer had told us that we could even protest in front of the house if we wanted to. So we thought, well, our mission was accomplished. And we were, about, we were driving back to the temple, and we got into the precincts of Los Angeles. And uh, we, we saw this building. It was the biggest, tallest at that time, the tallest building in Los Angeles. Now they have many big skyscrapers. That there was a law that you couldn't build anything more than 12, I think it was 12 stories high at that time. So the, the tallest building was, was that of the, uh, the newspaper the, called the Los Angeles Times. But it was Saturday night and nobody was there and it was all, the building was almost completely dark. So we drove into the uh, basement car park and there, was, there were a few cars there and there was one man in a um, kiosk who was sort of like the guard or you know, the, the, the one person who, who was uh, you know, watching over the things. So we asked him if we could find a reporter and he said, well, there's no one working today. It's, it's, it's Saturday night and, and no one worked even Saturday day. You can, you can try to find a reporter if you want. You can go up to the fourth floor. <laughs> so we, on the off chance, we took the, the, uh, the lift up to the fourth floor. And when we got out, we saw a, a big room. It was about maybe three or four times the size of this temple room, full of empty desks. And there was nobody working, except there was one desk that was manned by a person. <clears throat> so we, we uh, went up to this person. And uh, we were in disguise, of course. We weren't wearing devotee clothes, and we were wearing wigs and all sorts of things. So we started to talk with him, and uh, his name was Michael Levitt. And uh, he said that he knew our lawyer on a first-name basis, but he was working at the Los Angeles Times as a reporter to earn some income because there was very little effort, or very little effect of getting a, a position as a lawyer. So he said, well, that's a very interesting story. He said, that, that might even be a story for this uh, newspaper. He said, well, and then he gave us his card, and we left. And then, and then we drove back to the temple. And the temple was only about 20 minutes away. So um, we, we felt that our mission had been accomplished, because at least someone was taking interest in it. Someone in the media was taking interest in it. So we got back to the temple and then uh, and spent the night there. And then this vigilante thing was going on all the time. So the next morning there was a, a meeting of, um, of the, of the of book trust people. Every, every uh, Sunday morning they had a meeting in, in, uh, in, a, in a very well-appointed room. And uh, when, when the, there were about six people there, in, for, uh, in, there was the, the production manager, the, 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 and there were a lot of books being produced in Los Angeles at that time, of Prabhupada's books, even the Srimad Bhagavatam was being produced volume by volume. So when the, the, uh, the head of the temple, who was also <coughs> a member of the uh, book trust, told the devotees that one of their members had been kidnapped and out in Arcadia, then the, the, the whole thing started to turn, the, about the book production, started to turn into a, uh, what, what are we going to do about this, this uh, person that's been kidnapped? And this whole, uh, and then, and then uh, we said, well, what should we do? What can we do? Uh, maybe we can protest? 
So we, we phoned uh, our lawyer and asked him if we could stage a protest and have picket signs. And he said, you, and we, could we walk up and down in front of the house? And he said, well, you can walk up and down in front of the house, there, there's no, but there's no sidewalk there. It, you, the, uh, the lawn goes directly to the curb. So he said, well, it just you can do it. It's completely legal if you walk close to the curb, you can have your picket signs, but you, you, uh, yeah, it's completely legal. So uh, we summoned the people in the art department, and this whole session turned into a, uh, a thing of making picket signs made of, of red and white letters. And, and being artists, they knew exactly what to do. And they uh, wrote slogans like, what's happening to Mrs. K? Are her uh, parents kidnapping her? Or, or where's her religious freedom? Uh, there were several people. And, and uh, at, at about 8 or 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, not that, it was quite early. It was before that. It was closer to 7 o'clock. Some of the people in Arcadia had, had woken up because it was a Sunday morning and they, and they saw this picketing going on in front of a house that was nearby theirs and they started scratching their heads and wondering what's going on here. They'd never seen picket signs, they'd never seen Hare Krishnas before and, and these, these were in the early days of Hare Krishnas and they didn't even know what a Hare Krishna was. So then later on the same reporter, the same person that we talked to at the Los Angeles Times turned up um, he came to the, he found out where it was, and uh, he was with a photographer, and they took pictures of the protest going on. And these pictures appear, had appeared in, uh, uh, in, in the Los Angeles Times Monday newspaper, uh, in a very prominent, it was a very, fairly big picture showing these devotees protesting. And there was an article that he wrote uh, explaining what, you know, uh, that there was a, uh, uh, some, some unusual thing happened in Arcadia, California. And so uh, then we, uh, I had, I, then the shift of, of, of the head of the temple and I had, had come back. It was our turn. And, and at about 12 o'clock on Sunday, after, uh, Sunday noon, uh, a, 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 a plainclothesman said, he said, well, I was a, a detective for the Boston police. The Boston is, is quite a ways away. It's about... 4,000 kilometers from Los Angeles on the other side of the country, for those of you who don't know. And uh, he said that, uh, but it's, uh, he, he, and, and the police had, had driven by a few times and kind of given us a sign. He said, well, you're not doing anything illegal, so we're not going to arrest you. And then they drove by again and again and again, and each time they were, they, they had grown quite friendly, but they didn't arrest us because they couldn't. And so then a detective came along and we told him the whole story. And he said, well, I, I used to work for the Boston police, and they fired me because I was too much of a radical. But now that you've told me this story, I'm going to find out what's really going on. I'm, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. And uh, so we, we, uh, uh, we felt that we not only had an ally in the, in the media, but in the, in the police force. So then he disappeared, and, he, and we didn't see him. What actually had been going on, we found out later, was that they spirited her out the back door and drove up to another city about uh, 50 kilometers north of Los Angeles. The city was called um, Calistoga, or yeah, Santa Inez, and then uh, the area was called Calistoga. And, and the, the parents had hired these two sort of uh, women from Ardmore, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's also on the other side of the country. It's a very long ways. And they paid for them to fly out to Los, to Los Angeles and to try to, to talk some sense into their daughter, who they thought had gone off the rails. So they, they, uh, they, 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 they blindfolded her uh, before they got out of the car, and they took her to this house that was a house of some distant relative. And the, the two deprogrammer girls were in the house already waiting. And they, 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 uh, for several days, they tried to convince her that Krishna consciousness was kind of a bogus philosophy, it was a dangerous cult, and that she should give it up. And, this went on and on. And finally, she said, there's no way I can convince them unless I tell them that I agree with them, that yes, I'm, I'm now deprogrammed, I'm through with the Hare Krishnas, and that's it. They, they were absolutely adamant, and they wouldn't even let her go to the, to the uh, toilet by herself. They would accompany her. They were just very, very cruel. And finally, she realized she was a very intelligent uh, uh, woman. She said, okay, he said, you're right, and now I just have to get out outside for a little while to clear my head. And, and somehow or other, she convinced them that she was going to give up Krishna consciousness. So to, as soon as she got out of sight, out of the house, because she hadn't really given up Krishna consciousness, she made a run for it. 
and the first thing she ran into was was a road, a, a, a country road, and uh, she saw coming in the distance a police car, and the police saw her coming onto the road, this young girl, and one of them said to the other, he said, did you see what I saw? That was a young girl on this walking up the road on the road. Let's go find out what was happening. So when, when the car started to come closer to her, she dove into the nearest uh, ditch. There was a ditch alongside the road. And, but, but the police were adamant, and they, they, they found her. They pulled her out of the ditch, and then she told them the whole story. So she said, and, they, and, and they, somehow or other, they, they believed her more than that, that she was actually a kidnapped person. So uh, they took her to the uh, police station, and for, but before they took her to the police station, they, they asked her if she could, uh, what did she want to do? And she said, well, I want to make a phone call to my temple and tell them that I've escaped. So she went into a, another strange house and asked them if she could use the phone, and they didn't have any idea who she was or why she was there. And she didn't know if they were in on the whole thing, but she took a chance, made a telephone call to the head of the temple to, and told them that she had escaped. And by that time, the, the police had... Uh, had completely been convinced and they thought they should help her. So they took her to the police station and they said, well, we, you have to stay in police custody for the next tw uh, 24 hours because that's just the, the rule. So they, they took her to the police station and, and somehow or other, I don't know if it was their airplane or if it was an airplane that belonged to the, to the Los Angeles police, it was a private uh, plane, a, a Cessna, whatever it was, 21, and they flew her down to Los Angeles. And she, she arrived, and in, 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 by the time they got there, it was nighttime. It was getting dark. It was a Monday night. And, uh, but we, we couldn't see her. We could just see her from a distance, but we weren't allowed to speak with her or to have any conversation with her. And finally, the police released her, and she came back to the temple. And then the, 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 uh, there, there's more to the story, but I'm not going to tell it all now. And it, uh, it's something that you'll find out later. So uh, I'll read the verse again. Uh, by penance only, one can even approach the personality of Godhead. By penance only, can one even approach the personality of Godhead, who is within the heart of every living entity, and at the same time, beyond the reach of all the senses. I just want to add that this deprogramming movement has died down quite a bit since then. It's, uh, it, uh, the, in, in California, the Hare Krishnas almost are, are completely accepted, but not completely, but <laughs> somewhat more. Any, any uh, comments or questions or any, does anything we've read just to stimulate any, any uh, thought? Apparently, yes? So, thank you, Marge. Um, we hear that, you know, the material world is a place of envious souls who reject Krishna and so on and and so therefore a spiritual movement, a Vaishnava movement within the material world is, is bound to you know, get um, negative reactions from, from those who reject Krishna. So I get that. Um, at the same time, we know now <laughs> that uh, some individuals are, you know, we made, we, the devotees, made mistakes in the pioneering uh, uh, stages of our, of our movement. And so my question is, Marge, if we had to redo it again um, with your wisdom, what, would, what, what do you think we could you know, do differently so as to not perhaps get as uh, antagonistic uh, reactions, some warranted but some perhaps justified, from the general public? Uh, well, I guess it depends on, on where you are. I mean, in, in France, for example, the, the, the people are very negative towards the Krishna consciousness movement. But in, in Southern California, they're very positive about it. And in other, other cities, in New York City, actually, uh, there's a, a, a very positive element. There's also a lot of uh, enemies in, in the New York City. Prabhupada entered one lecture in 1977 by saying there's a lot of enemies out there. And, and the very last thing he said in the lecture was that, and Johnny Walker is still going strong. But people were, were uh, the, and there was a, uh, uproarious laughter because people were wondering, what, what does a sadhu have to, to, to do with Johnny Walker, which is a whiskey? And apparently Prabhupada saw some kind of an advertisement somewhere, maybe in, in the New York subway, about Johnny Walker uh, whiskey, scotch or something like that. So the, 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 the point is that, 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 uh, that uh, there was a very antagonistic element going on at that time. 
And uh, I don't think we would have done everything, anything really different, even if we had known that uh, eventually the, the people of California would be more accepting towards the Krishna consciousness movement. And we even uh, filed lawsuits against the, the uh, people who did the kidnapping. And one of them resulted in a $17,000 award that the, the parents, the kidnappers, had to pay. So they were punished, and they, they, in a very kind of un, un, unhappy way, they, they realized that what they did was wrong. Um, and of course, since then, there has been some reconciliation between Mrs. K, who is still a devotee, or still you know, um, uh, living with her fiance under the same roof. And uh, there had been some kind of re reconciliation. The, the uh, god brother, who is very inimical, uh, has, has, has got separated from her sister. And, and she even had a reconciliation with the sister and the parents, and the whole thing was, was mitigated in that way. So the, the point is that, that uh, we have to, to fight fire sometimes with fire. <clears throat> and uh, it's necessary to, to be accepted. Um, yeah. It's, it's actually necessary. The, the, there was one incident where Prabhupada was in uh, Ahovalam. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's where there are a lot of Nishringa temples. And he, and he said that this ruin, he pointed it out to Prabhupada. Prabhupada was there with him, with Jayadwaita. He said, I want to take a picture of this ruin and put it on Back to Godhead. And we can say that this building was the original palace of Ranya Kashipu. Can I do it? And Prabhupada didn't answer. And then uh, a, a little while later, Prabhupada said, I don't think it's a good idea. He said, I don't want to get involved because he said, there's a lot of people that think Nishringadev's original palace was not in that location. And, and why should we get involved in anything controversial? And, uh, and there was another incident that, uh, that happened when Prabhupada was there. Uh, now, this happened after Prabhupada, but, but there's a temple in, in a place called Udupi in, in, in uh, western India. And, in, and there's a, a, a Goshala right inside the temple with cows inside the temple. And it's a, it's a big temple, so there's room for a, a Goshala there. But, and, you know, and people of India, are, they're not so worried about everything being perfectly uh, clean. <laughs> So a lot of people would come to that temple just to feed the, the cows. Little, they were little cows. They were about one and a half meters tall, and they were, they were a different color. Most of them were black. And so there was a, a big protest in that city against these, saying that these weren't real cows, that to, to be a real cow, you had to be a, a, a boss indicus or, or what, a gear cow or, or Indian cow, what those with the big humps like they have in northern India. And that's still going on, as far as I know. And they had billboards, hoardings, they call them in India, and, they were staging protests, and they were marching, and, and they were carrying banners and protesting. And uh, Prabhupada never got involved in that controversy. He never even mentioned it, because we think that the Lord Chaitanya was born in Mayapur, under the jackfruit tree in that place. But there's some people that say that he was born in, in another place, and they're very convinced about it. But Prabhupada hasn't even touched on, he never even touched on that controversy. So the, the point is, sometimes we have to fight, sometimes we have to just tolerate. Uh, depending on, on the time of day and the, the place and the country. So I don't know if that, it's a, it's a kind of a question that could, uh, one could spend several lifetimes answering, but that's basically it. Any other comments or, yes? Waiting for the microphone. <laughs> uh, hi, Krishna Maharaj. Um, I was watching um, Jayadvaita Maharaj's video on remembering Srila Prabhupada yesterday, and he was saying how Prabhupada said, just to be yourself in Krishna consciousness. And I was wondering, um, how do you know when you're acting on a point of just your false ego, or if you're acting on a point of your own individuality for Krishna consciousness? Well, I ask all of my disciples, and even friends of my disciples, even people that I know, if they can read every day at least 30 pages of Prabhupada's books. Because without that knowledge, it's impossible to be 100% convinced about Krishna consciousness. I mean, there's even instances of people who were involved in, in one of the ashrams here who left the, the, after two days because, because they, they had succumbed to a propaganda effort on the part of the vegans. And they, were, they had reached Los Angeles, and they were propagating the idea that you shouldn't drink milk and that only milk from a human mother is, poss is, is legitimate for humans and that sort of thing. But uh, if, and, the, and, and, and it had been, 
admitted that they weren't very conversant with Hare Krishna philosophy and that they weren't very regular in reading. So the point is that if one is convinced about Krishna consciousness, either through reading or through, through association with uh, senior devotees or both, um, one can be convinced about Krishna consciousness, that Krishna consciousness is for me and it's right. And, and even though there's a lot of objection, there may even be uh, a lot of inimical feeling, uh, it doesn't matter because the, the, that, uh, w that uh, we're convinced that we're doing the right thing. And, and that's why Prabhupada said that if you're convinced about Krishna consciousness, philosophically or you know for, for, for whatever reason it is then that's what you have to stick with I don't know if that's a, a answers your question yeah it actually answers one of my other questions that I had so that was nice anyways the point is that that if if we're serious about it and we stick with it uh, we'll find that 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 uh, I think it was a German philosopher named Schopenhauer who said that every every truth begins with opposition and then there's, uh, 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 begins with ignorance, ignore it. And then it becomes op opposed. And then it, uh, finally it, it, it becomes accepted. So I think we're in the, in the sort of somewhere in the second or between the second and third stage. Somewhere we're completely accepted. In some places um, we're, 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 we're opposed depending on where we are and what we're doing. So that's why we have to stick with Krishna consciousness. I mean, that's one of my advice is, is to stick with it. Don't leave it. Because the, and, and in nectar devotion, it's described what a second class devotee is. A second class devotee, according to the philosophy, is one, or first, uh, a third class devotee, is one who can be convinced by a, a very convincing argument about something that's not Krishna conscious. But a, 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 a first class devotee is never convinced by that sort of thing and, and, and even can convince other people that they are wrong, that they, that they have to believe in God, they have to be theists, they have to be uh, Krishna conscious in order to be happy. So everything is, is depending very much on time, place, and circumstance. Yes? Make sense? Any other comments or questions? Okay, we'll, we'll end at that point. Hare Krishna, thank you. <laughs>